Second Corinthians chapter thirteen verse eight. Second, Second Corinthians chapter thirteen verse eight. For we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. It's very, very important word. We can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. How? Learn from the history. Okay, let me introduce some more about the Charles Oldman. He had been present at the World Missionary Conference in Edinburgh in 1910. He shared certain special interests with Stevenson, and the two men were intimate, a friend of long standing. Both Manchin and Oldman learned theology through B.B. Warfield and felt sympathy toward the old Princeton theology. As the fundamentalism, modernism controversy climax, uh, Oldman declares himself, I am a fundamentalist always in faith. Oldman was the uh, editor of the fundamentals with his father. He was recognized as a conservative leader from both inside and outside of the church. He had no problem on the Bible and his eschatological, eschatological view was the premillennialism. However, Manchin had a millennial view in his eschatology. Manchin said, I am not a fundamentalist. Also, he was a, a millennialist. The Manchin, Dr. Manchin, he was fighting against the modernist. But uh, Dr. Oldman, he say, he said about himself, I am a fundamentalist always in faith. He also, he has the eschatological position, uh, the premillennialism. He's more uh, like us than uh, Dr. J. Gresham Machen. But he was working for modernist. He was working for WCC, ecumenism, Oddman. And theology, no problem. Eh? Theological position, he was a fundamentalist. But his attitude destroyed all his fame. Altman rejected new thought, including so, including the social gospel, because he thought the social gospel was neither Christianity nor socialism, for is minimizing or denying the incarnation, the virgin birth of Jesus Christ, the atonement and the resurrection, justification by faith, the work of the Holy Spirit and the advent of Jesus Christ. He believed all these precious doctrines. He even against the social gospel, against the modernism. But the other hand, Mason did not like the term fundamentalist. Even he declared that he was not a fundamentalist. It, is, it was very interesting. Nevertheless, Oldman cooperated with modernists, but Machen stood for, for fundamentalists against the modernists. 
Even though he did not reject the traditional and conservative system of theology, Adman became a friend with whom rejected that system of theology willingly and ignored the doctrinal differences purposely. Mason did not agree with Adman. It was not a matter of personal animosity at all, but one solely of principle. Okay. So we are, we are not agree doctrinally with the J. Gresham Machen, but we agree with him, his attitude against the modernist. The other man, he doctrinally, theologically, he was same with us, but his attitude to modernism quite different. So he became a good friend of modernist. How come I don't know? So we have to learn good theology from our Alma Mater Faison Bible College and we have to learn the attitude against the false doctrine. We have to learn from our Bible College, not only theology, the attitude of life. Having reviewed the different Differences that emerged chiefly in the church union and forty controversies, Machen spoke of the differences in principle. Dr. Oldman does not indeed reject the doctrinal system of our church, but he is perfectly willing to make a common cause with those who rejected the modernist. And he is perfectly willing on many occasions to keep it in the background. Very interesting. The good theology and good attitude, the Lord will use you to protect his church and his truth. But if you have the Good theology, but wrong attitude, you will destroy the church and the biblical truth. Okay? Christian doctrine I held is not merely connected with the gospel, but it is identical with the gospel. And if I did not preach it at all times, and especially in those places where it subject me to personal abuse, I should regard myself as guilty or sheer unfaithfulness to Christ. It is I hold only as he is offered to us in the gospel, that is in the doctrine, which the world despise that Christ saves sinful men and never will I create the impression that there can be Christian prayer or Christian service except on the basis redeeming facts which are now called in question by a large party in our church. So a lot of the majority of the conservatives, they were inclusivist. But finally, they destroyed all the precious doctrine from the Bible. The representative of this inclusivist was uh, Dr. Erdman. Good theology, but wrong attitude. Erdman was elected as the president of the General Assembly of 1925 with the full support of the modernists and the inclusive conservatives. Of course, 
Modern in day number one, uh, the fundamentalist to be a, a moderate, okay, the president of the general assembly. So they support the Ottoman inclusive Christian, inclusive conservatives. At this assembly, a commission of 15 was appointed to study the present spiritual condition of our church and the causes making for unrest and to report to the next general assembly to the end that the purity, peace, unity, and progress of the church may be assured. Uh, the committee 15, the commission of 15 was appointed under the uh, Dr. Erdman. Uh, they want to research the reason making for unrest in the church and the purity, peace, unity. This kind of things. Why our church, inside our church, a lot of troubles. We want to research that. The committee was consisted inclusive conservatives, except one modernist and four ultra conservative. Ultra conservatives mean fu fundamentalist and all this is exclusive conservatives. But the 10 inclusive conservatives, so they want to make a unity and rest in the church. Okay, they want to compromise. The General Assembly was heading toward inclusivism because the president, the moderate, he was the one of the inclusivist. So everybody want, uh, want to follow him. The committee did seek to gather evidence and opinions from various quarters and Mason was among those invited to make a statement. His careful prepared analysis submitted to the committee on December 2nd, 1925, took the position that the causes of unrest were all uh, reducible to one great underlying cause. The widespread and in many quarters dominant position that the causes of the church as well as among its lay members of a type of thought and experience commonly called modernism, which is diametrically opposed to the constitution of our church and to the Christian religion. Uh, the doctor mentioned, uh, he said all the cause, causes of the church, the troubles and unrest comes from modernism. They oppose the, our constitution and they oppose to the Christian religion. They are totally unbiblical. They are belong to another religion. They are not Christians. They are making all the trouble in our church. But when the report of the committee was finally published, it was far from sharing Machen's analysis of the state of the church. They reject the opinion of Dr. Gresham Machen because they didn't like this kind of opinion from exclusive conservatives ultra 
conservatives, okay, fundamentalists. They didn't want to have this kind of opinion. So they never used the uh, Dr. Mason's research and his opinion. Okay? In approving this report, the Assembly of 1926 gave further evidence of the drift toward broad churchism. So the inclusivist, they controlled the denomination, they made the committee, also majority of them the inclusivist. Now they are going to more and more to broad churchism. Broad churchism allowed every uh, thought, every doctrinal position. How can they have the rest in this kind of church? Every uh, thinking, inclusivist, exclusivist, and modernism together in one church. Different thinking, different faith. Different experience, different mindset. How can they have, they can be harmonized? It cannot. Impossible. The Machen, Dr. Machen said, all the problem came from modernists. They against our con constitution of the church. Uh, what is the constitution of the church? This is the Westminster Confession of Faith and against to the Christian religion. What is the Christian religion? All the fundamental doctrines. Modernists, they brought all the problem, but the inclusivist, the majority, they did not accept of the research of Dr. Gresham Machens. They more, more broadening church. Okay. They were working on broadening way. At the time, the faculty of Princeton Theological Seminary became divided more sharply into two groups. The majority group of which Mason was a member and the minority group led by President Stevenson and Erdman. A widespread feeling developed among the board of directors and the majority group in the faculty that Stevenson should resign as president but no definite steps were taken to bring that about. In the board of directors in, uh, of the uh, Westminster Theological Seminary, the Stevenson and the Erdman, they were minority. And the Machen's party, they were uh, majority. A very uh, substantial majority of the board of directors who were in authority in the realm of administration and instruction favored the majority of the faculty. But there was another board in um, Princeton Theological Seminary, we call this the Board of Trustees. Eh? who officially held and administrated the property and funds of the institution were largely sympathetic with the minority of the faculty. Okay, So board of trustees, uh, most of them were laymen. Okay? So they had uh, some sympathy to the minority, Erdman and Stevenson, because they couldn't understand the issues, the essence of the issues, controversy, fundamentalism, and uh, modernism. Okay, so they just favor to Erdman and Stevenson because they always say about the love and unity, peace, tolerance in the church. This is sound good. 
Full advantage was taken of this extraordinary situation by the supporters of Stevenson and Erdman as a 1926 assembly approached when the trustees and a minority of the uh, directors appeal to the assembly to appoint a committee to make a special investigation of the seminary. Now, seminary was the, all the members, board members, they were fighting against each other because of the truth. This is controversy of fundamentalists and liberals, modernists in the Princeton Theological Seminary. And remember, the faculty, the board of directors, the majority was very conservative and very fundamental. But the board of trustees, uh, they are, most of them, inclusivist. Eh? So the minority faculty, the Erdman and uh, Stevens, they appeal to General Assembly because General Assembly is more favored to them because the president, the moderate, he was the Erdman. He, they favored to Erdman, the former uh, president. Okay, so they, uh, made a committee, okay. The acceptance of this uh, proposal was one of the major decisions of that year and was a decisive step toward the reorganization of the seminar which was consummate in 1929. The Assembly's Committee of Five, after a study of the seminar situation, was convinced that the tension caused by the pronounced differences of attitude toward ecclesiastical policy was revealing certain organizational weakness in the institution. In examining the structure of the seminary still further, the committee felt that the seminary's charter did not sufficiently ensure to the General Assembly ultimate control of the institution's property. On the basis of its study, the Committee of Five prepared its report to the General Assembly of 1927. The root and source of the serious difficulties at Princeton seem to be in the plan of government by two borders. Border of uh, directors and board of board of trustees. Okay, two borders. So to remedy the situation, the report recommended that the assembly's committee of five be increased increased to nine and that the enlarged committee be instructed to take all necessary legal steps to establish a single board of control for said seminary, define the relationship and recognize the right of control of the General Assembly under the existing trust so as to assure the right of the Presbyterian Church in the trust property and the instruction of the seminary and to cooperate in preparing a complete plan for the educational work of the seminary under the administration of the new board and under the direction and control of the assembly. What's this? Uh, they want to make two borders into one border. 
controlled under control by assembly, general assembly. So they want general assembly want to control full seminary. Okay, so all the faculty and all the 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 member board of directors they must obey to the general assembly. The problem is, the most of them, the faculty, they uh, faculty members, they were conservative. They were very fundamental. But the general assembly was controlled by inclusivist, even modernist. But they said the Bible, the Princeton Theological Seminary must be under the control of the general assembly. So Machen, he published a 48-page booklet under the title, The Attack Upon Princeton Seminary, a plea for fair play in December 1927, for the Princeton Theological Seminary. So, Dr. J. Gresham Machen, he knew very well the condition and result of this decision by General Assembly. This regarding the personal attack that had been made upon him, he set forth in an uh, eloquent manner what his view regarding the situation really was. In the foreground, Machen placed the stand of the seminary for the full truthfulness of the Bible as the word of God and for the vi vigorous defense and propagation of the reform the Calvinistic system of doctrine which is the system of doctrine that the Bible teaches so Dr. Machen and his party were fighting against the inclusivist and against the modernist to defend the Biblical position, the Calvinistic and Reform system of doctrines. But the General Assembly, the denomination was controlled by inclusivist and by modernist. So Manchin was strongly opposing the reorganization of the two boards of Princeton Seminary the organization would have the effect of shifting the control of the seminary from the conservative to the uh, moderate and liberal. Here, conservatives means exclusivist and fundamentals. Major's efforts were to no avail. The General Assembly of 1922 approved the reorganization in the final day of May and the early days of June. So new board had 33 members, 11 from the board of directors, 11 from the board of trustees, 11 from the church. So the two of them, the board of directors, Stevens and Oldman, the plus uh, from the board of trustees, 11, and from the church, 11. Uh, they were all, uh, most of them, the inclusivist. Okay? Only the nine from the board of directors, they were fundamentals. So now the fundamentals, after the new board, they became a minority, the inclusivist, the who favored to modernism, they became the majority. So, 
the mansion and their friend they felt uh, it is finished. No more conservative doctrines, no more reform theology, no more Calvinistic system of theology in Princeton Theological Seminary. It is dead. The end. So Machen resigned from the Princeton Seminary with Robert Dick Wilson, Oswald T. Ellis, and Cornelius Ventil. Some of those who had solely relationship with Machen wanted to remain in the Princeton Theological Seminary for personal reasons. They do not want to come out from Princeton Theological Seminary. After Machen resigned from the seminary, the Princeton Theological Seminary became totally a new Princeton Theological Seminary. So until uh, from beginning to the 1929, we call this Old Princeton, Old Princeton Theology. After 1929, totally different from old Princeton. We call this New Princeton Theological Seminary or New Princeton Theology. New Princeton Theology. So if we talk about the sound doctrine in Princeton, we have to deal until the 1929 because of this reason. Now still the Princeton Theological Seminary serves for modernistic, modern, uh, theology of modernist, modernism. They are teaching the modernism until today. So don't have any kind of envy, uh, for Harvard Divinity School and Yale Divinity School and Princeton Theological Seminary. They are all controlled by heresy or uh, modernist. Okay? So I believe uh, the Far Eastern Bible College one of the uh, best colleges in this world. I'm not kidding. Because we are always teaching you the biblical truth, the Bible itself. Remember, quote non est biblicum, non est theologicum. What is not biblical is not theological. So no more Princeton Theological Seminary after 1929. So Robert Dick Wilson, he was an American linguistic scholar who devoted his life to prove the reliability of the Hebrew Bible in his quest to determine the accuracy of the original manuscript. Wilson learned 45 languages including Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek, as well as all the languages into which the scriptures had been translated up to 600 AD. Robert Dick Wilson, great scholar. And Oswald T. Ellis, Ellis. he taught in the Department of Semitic Philosophy at Princeton Theological Seminary. In 1929, Alice and other founded Westminster Theological Seminary. Alice was independently wealthy and it was his property in Philadelphia, which initially served as the home of the new seminary. He taught at Westminster for six years and resigned in 1935 to devote himself to writing and study. And Cornelius Ventil, he was, was a Christian philosopher, reformed theologian, and presuppositional apologist. What is presuppositional apologist? We have to believe in that 
Bible is true. So our all thinking comes out biblical logic, not from our own reasoning. This is presupposition of his apologetics. It's very famous. Uh, he began teaching at Princeton Theological Seminary, but shortly went with the conservative group that founded Westminster Theological Seminary, uh, where he taught for 43 years of his life. He taught apologetics and systematic theology there until his retirement in 1972 and continued to teach occasionally until 1979. Uh, also, uh, in Korea, I was using his own book. It was very, very difficult. The first part was about the, all the philosophy. And next part about the um, apologetics, but uh, he gave me one insight about the presuppositional apolog apologetic. It's very important. The Bible is the truth. We have to start our all discourse and reasoning from the Bible. This is teaching of Cornelius Ventil. Uh, a bad Bible college will kill the church. So like a Union Theological Seminary. And bad church, bad denomination also will kill the Bible college. This is a Princeton Theological Seminary and General Assembly. General Assembly occupied by inclusivists, by uh, modernists, they destroyed their own Bible culture, were still conservatives. Remember, without the Bible college, the church will die. So Bible college is very, very important. No Bible college, church will die, remember this. But the church also must uh, sustain, in, must be sustained in the biblical truth. Church, we, church is corrupted by false doctrine, by modern and worldly thought, and church will destroy the Bible college. And so Bible college, the church must go together, help each other. So always must pray the Bible college and the faculty and board of directors to be in the way of all the paths. So let's pray for our Bible college. The Lord use this Bible college for the next generation. Now I send my wife and two daughters to study in Firestone Bible College. I have a dream. I will send also my grandchildren to this Bible college. But I'm not sure until that time, after 20 years or 25 years, still has the same doctrinal position. I'm not sure. Nobody knows. I'm always praying for Firestone Bible College, especially the principal, all the faculty members, and the uh, the members of board of directors. Even the Lord sent good students. They have to learn from all the precious uh, lessons from their teacher. They must hand over to next generations. So the good, the contents, the Bible is here. And good teachers 
and good student. May the Lord bless this Bible college, Firestone Bible College. So now, uh, let us uh, see about the Westminster Theological Seminary. Okay? Even though uh, the J. Gresham Machen founded the Westminster Theological Seminary after his uh, resignation from the Princeton Theological Seminary, Machen did not leave from his denomination. He was the pastor. He is still the member of PCUSA, Presbyterian Church in United States of America. He was still staying in PCUSA. He continued his great interest on the foreign missions. Uh, through his address in Philadelphia in 1926, Machen uh, lamented, uh, lamented about whom were not Christian in their sermon saying everything was good in this period of crisis. Okay. There is another address at London in England on June 17, 1932, Machen delighted Christian scholarship with evangelism. He emphasized that uh, preachers and evangelists should know every well the system of truth which was revealed by God through the entire Bible and should preach the simple gospel. Machen showed his opinion on the church in the Christian view of man. He thought that the church could not be trusted because of her apostasy. Okay? So the heavenly church and triumphal church, invisible church, there's no problem, but the visible church, earthly church, militant church, has sometimes has the problem, even apostasy. So we cannot trust any denomination and any pastor, any church member 100%. Okay, I'm very sorry to say this. Even do not trust yourself. Okay, this is the lesson from the history. Okay, you start very well with the faith, but how about the end of your life journey? Are you still faithful? Nobody knows. Before the Lord Jesus Christ, before his judgment seat, it will be shown. Nobody knows. Okay? Don't trust anyone. Don't trust any institutions. Even don't trust your denominations. Trust in God and trust in his word. This is our final authority. One point at last in clear, we cannot trust the church, the visible church, the church as it now actually exists upon this earth, has fallen too open into error and sin. There are many things that change, but there is one thing that does not change. It is the world of the living and true God. The world is in decadence, the visible church, into a considerable extent apostate. But when God speaks, we can trust Him, and His word stands forever sure. This is the, the idea from Dr. J. Gresham Machen. He said, do not trust the church. Why? It came out from his own experience. 
the Presbyterian Church in United States of America. Once upon a time, it was very faithful to the Lord, faithful to the Word of God, but now they denied all the fundamental doctrines. They destroyed their own church, also they destroyed their own Bible college. College, Princeton Theological Seminary. How about the Singapore Bible Presbyterian Church? Still faithful? Yes, I believe some of them still faithful unto the Lord and faithful unto the Word of God. How about the other Bible Presbyterian churches? Can we trust them? They just have the name, but they already lost all the spirit, burning zeal for the Lord, for the word of God. Remember, for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is the reason of the existence of the church. They just enjoy the name of BP and just they enjoy the, all the buildings or church members. But no more BP spirit. What is the BP spirit? Bible Presbyterian spirit. This is the spirit of fundamentalist. They were fighting against modernist modernity to depend the biblical doctrines, biblical truths. So don't trust anyone and don't trust any church on the earth. Trust in God and trust it. Trust in the word of God. Major extended his opinion on the church to mission agents which were established by the church. Now church must extend their hand uh, their, to a mission field. Uh, this is very, very important task. Uh, Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 to 20, we call this Great Commission, right? Jesus Christ said, Go ye therefore and make disciples, all nations. So church must obey the commandment of Jesus Christ. We have to focus on the missions. So we cannot uh, separate from mission work. This is the uh, purpose of existence of the church. So I'm very happy for, I don't know the other Bible, uh, the other Bible Presbyterian churches, but the true life Bible Presbyterian church always focus on the uh, mission. They evangelize their own people and also they want to send a missionary and support. Okay? So join the mission work and you can experience the power of Holy Spirit. Why the Holy Spirit uh, gave the power to disciples? Do you know the reason? Because of mission, okay? The evangelizing. In mission field, we are experiencing the extraordinary work of the Holy Spirit. If you want to see this, please join the mission work. Okay? Welcome. Especially come to Africa. It's quite good. We are opening the door for the graduate of Firestone Bible College student. Okay? Uh, we are not very strict to recruit the missionaries. 
But so many people uh, send the letters. Can we join your mission work? Eh? So many people, because we have uh, three campus in Kenya, Rwanda, and Tanzania. We need, actually, we need the uh, teachers. But we never accept them. No. We want to have very faithful teachers to God's word. So we, but we always welcome the graduate from Firestone Bible College. Okay? Remember. He mentioned about the problems the mission agent. But same problem until today. But one thing is perfectly plain, whether or no liberals are Christians, it is at any late perfectly clear that liberalism is not Christianity. And that being the case, it is highly undesirable that liberalism and Christianity should continue to be propagated within the bounds of the same organization. A separation between the two parties in the church is the crying need of the hour. What's this? Okay, now the PCUSA, the Presbyterian Church in United States of America, they had a mission uh, organization, okay, mission uh, agency. But they send uh, the missionaries, they are liberal, they are modernist. They are not believing all the truth from the Bible. They are denying all the fundamental doctrines. Even they are not believing in Jesus Christ. They never preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to save people from their sin. What are they doing in the mission field, the liberal missionaries? Of course, they are building the hospital, they are building the schools, they bring the food without the gospel of Jesus Christ. But the church members, uh, they still in the PCUSA, the liberal denominations, but they never know this kind of condition in mission field. Now they are supporting mission agency, they are supporting missionaries, but the gospel of Jesus Christ never preached. So the matron said, yeah, okay. And the problem was, the fundamentally, they are still in the PC USA. They also uh, uh, has the the nominee and the candidate of missionaries. But the uh, General Assembly and mission agency, they reject all these fundamental mission, uh, fundamental, uh, missionaries, okay? So how can you send the faithful missionary to the mission field on the PC USA? No way. So now the matron, okay, let us separate, okay, for biblical mission. So, Adman, he was prominently associated with the Board of Foreign Mission. The Board of Foreign Mission. As a member 1906-42 and as a president 1926-41. He had been president at the World Missionary Conference in Edinburgh in 1910. This is the World Missionary Conference in Edinburgh in 1910 was not conservative meeting, conservative Christian meeting. This is uh, the mixed, all the missionaries in the world. It is the beginning point of 
the ecumenism. So before the church, the in mission field has this kind of problem, ecumenism, by liberal uh, missionaries. Okay? It will make big problem. But the BFM, the board of foreign mission, the president was the old man. So he didn't like um, Gratian Machen's position. So he reject all the uh, missionary candidates from Machen, Machen's party, fundamentalists. Okay. So what can the what could the, the Dr. Machen do? The kind of conditions. So Adman also had an optimistic view of the board of foreign mission. He thought that Presbyterian missionaries were free from apostasy. Okay? So mention he said to Adman, there are a lot of apostasy in mission field by liberal missionaries. But the Adman said, no, 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 this kind of apostasy in Presbyterian missionaries. Mention should Adman's view on missions next to army uh, Charlie Odman seems to have been the first man in the Princeton to read my book Christianity and Liberalism through. He wrote me a very nice note but expressing regret that I had not made an exception of Presbyterian missionaries on Odman really seems to think that Presbyterian missionaries are all okay. Is it true? The denomination was occupied by uh, inclusivist and by modernist. And also the Bible college. No more conservative Bible college. How about the missionaries? Of course, there were liberal missionaries in uh, PC USA, but the uh, Erdman and Stevens, they said, no problem in our denomination, no problem in Bible pres uh, Presbyterian missionaries, no apostasy. But they are doing this apostasy now, the Erdman and Stevenson. So don't say to the people, no problem in the BP church. No! BP church also has a lot of problems. So we have to adjust. We have to return back to the word of God. And we sometimes we must uh, repent our sin. There's no perfect uh, church on the earth. Make mistakes sometimes. So some younger generation, they are thinking, ah, we are very safe because we are in the Bible Presbyterian Church. But this is not the automatic ticket to the heaven. Okay, you must believe in Jesus Christ by yourself. You must accept Jesus Christ as your Savior and the Lord as personally. Okay? We are not Roman Catholic. We are not the Jew. The time of Jesus Christ, the Israelite, the Jews, they said we are the sons of Abraham. We are all saved by the lineage of from Abraham. True? No. A few people who believed in Jesus Christ, they were saved. But the others, they did not believe in Jesus Christ. They said, we are the people of God, we are chosen people. 
But they did not believe in Jesus Christ. How about today's younger generations? They're thinking, I'm a BP church member. Our church has no problem. So automatically, I will get the salvation. Very, very dangerous thing, thinking. Okay, see, Oldman and Stevenson, they said, our denomination has no problem, our mission is no problem, but the Stevenson and Oldman, they were the problem. They never know. So we are sometimes deceiving someone. We are also deceived, deceived by the others. But remember, we are deceived by ourselves. The collision between the fundamentalists and modernists on the policy of mission became serious at the end of 1932. At the time, Raymond's report on mission, seven volumes, was published uh, unofficially by the committee of 15 members through the support of John D. Uh, Rockefeller, a Baptist businessman. Uh, interestingly, this man, the businessman Rockefeller, he uh, built one big church building in New York, and he gave this church to Harry Emerson Postick. Okay. His thinking also was the liberal, modernized. Uh, the Rockefeller uh, confirmed ecumenicist. He supported of the ecumenism. Over the years, he gave substantial sums to some institutions. The International World Movement and Federal Council of Churches, the Union Theological Seminary. He was gave a lot of money for to Union Theological Seminary, most liberal modernistic seminary. New York Riverside Church. Uh, this is a big church. My brother-in-law he uh, went to uh, New York. He took the picture, this New York Riverside Church, very big and very beautiful. Uh, the pastor was the Riverside Church was Harry Emerson Fostick, very famous modernist. Also he support uh, World Council of Churches, WCC. Uh, William Ernest Hawking, who was the chairman of the committee, uh, published here, Rethinking Missions, a uh, layman's inquiry after 100 years, which was full of the spirit of modernism and tolerance. Uh, what is the Rethinking Missions? Uh, they were saying, uh, traditional mission from the, the time of apostolic church until today was something wrong. So we have to rethink about mission. Uh, the conclusion is, uh, no need to preach the gospel to the people. Just bring the food and just bring the school and bring the hospital. Just help them. And also these rethinking of missions uh, contain the comparative religion concept. Okay, The other religions also has the way of salvation. So we have to rethink. Okay? So no need to preach the gospel, no need to teach the Bible to them.
just help them to survive. This book emphasized that modern missions should try to understand surrounding religions positively and to recognize common element in the religion and to cooperate with. Uh, you are the missionary in Muslim country. Uh, just give up the Christianity and uh, became become the Muslim. Okay, and understand the Muslim religion positively and recognize common elements. What's the recognized common elements? Okay, we are believing in God and Muslims also believing in Allah. Okay? Allah means the God above. Okay? So, also we have the Bible. And the Muslims, they also had the, the Holy Book, the Quran. So, and uh, they are also praying five times per day, right? So we also praying. Sometimes they are very diligent, more than us. And we, uh, every Lord's Day, we offer our, uh, the offerings and tithe, okay? Also Muslims, they must give some money for donation. This is Muslim law. So you know the Muslim country, in their poem, they have uh, the, some application. Uh, they earn some money, some amount, automatically calculate how much money you have to donate. Okay, this is Muslim. So nothing different, okay, except the doctrine. So do not say the doctrine anymore. Then we can live together, okay? Cooperate with this religion. Do not just say the doctrine. Just ignore the doctrine. Then we can live with them. No fighting. This is the rethinking of missions. Now in Mission Field, I don't know the other place, but in Tanzania, my area, a few pastors, the others all the Raymond missionaries, and they never trained the, under the Bible college. So they don't know how to preach. They don't know how to teach the Bible. They don't know how to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. They just build a house, build a school. They are running the school. and But in the school, they never preach the gospel. They are building the hospital. That's all. I very thankful to BP churches. They never send the missionary without the theological training. If anyone to go to mission field, uh, they uh, the pastors always encourage them go to FPBC first and learn God's word and go to the mission field with the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is traditional missions, but the rethinking missions, they say no need to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ until today in our mission field. The modern is welcome this book very much because this all the thinking support their ideas the Paul Buck, who belonged to the Board of Foreign Missions, supported this book. She was a very famous uh, missionary to China. But she was uh, one of the uh, modernists. For this reason, she resigned from the 
position of the missionary later because the, some conservative Christians, they oppose to resign because you are the modernist, modernist, uh, uh, missionary, so you cannot be a, our missionary because until this time the majority was the conservative even though they were inclusivist. So Pulbuck, she was a novelist actually, very famous lady. The conservative considers that this book absolutely denied the historical and evangelical Christianity. The, through publishing a booklet, Modernism and the Board of Foreign Missions, Machin showed his position in which he opposed modernist mission policy. But except very, very conservative, the denomination, now the, all the mission field full of these modernist missionaries. Now I face this kind of difficulties. Only a few pastors there, and they are planting churches, preaching the gospel, teaching the God's word. But the others, Never think about the gospel of Jesus Christ. They brought a lot of money from the churches. The building the schools, running the schools and building the hospital and bring the, the food. But no gospel of Jesus Christ, no gospel message. This is the real problems. Spend a lot of money, but no salvation there. Now they are running all the business to survive in mission field. The rethinking mission is not rethinking actually. This is apostate. Destroying the missions. The condition of that day was unfair. unfair favorable for the conservatives, the modernity took over the General Assembly of the PCUSA and the Board of Foreign Missions was not free from the influence of the modernist. The Board of Foreign Missions was rejecting missionary candidates who agree with the Machen because of the unity in the mission field. In mission field, the fundamental list, the missionaries, they are preaching the word of God, but the other missionaries from same mission agents, they never preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. They just spend the money to help the people without no gospel message. It will bring some conflict and troubles in mission field. So the General Assembly, the mission agent, the Board of Foreign Mission, they reject the fundamental missionary candidate because they are always making the trouble in the mission field and or even in the church, in the denominations. Is it fair? And some missionaries of the Board of Foreign Mission advocate modernistic opinions against Christianity. For this reason, Machen founded the Independent Board for Presbyterian Foreign Missions, IBPFM, in 1933. This is the reason why he established new mission agents, mission board, independent board for Presbyterian foreign missions. This is a very serious problem in mission field. Not just send the money, not just send the missionaries. Always check the mystery, the relationship with the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is the purpose of mission. But today, 
So a lot of missionaries, they are working as a modernistic missionaries. But I believe until the end of this world, we have to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ in our church, in our mission field. Okay, next we have to see split in PC USA. The result of the fundamentalist modernist controversy were three institutions by Machen, were established three institutions. The first, Westminster Theological Seminary, 1929, uh, separate from Princeton Theological Seminary. The 1933, the Independent Board for Presbyterian Foreign Missions, 1933. Uh, the Bible College of East Africa in Kenya was established by Independent Board for Presbyterian Foreign Missions under the Carl McIntyre. So this Bible College uh, very conservative and fundamental Bible college in Africa. Also, the Bible college Kenya extended the hands into Tanzania, Arusha, uh, established one Bible college. The sister college called the Bible college of East Africa, Tanzania, uh, 15 years ago. And now we are running one more Bible college in Rwanda, Kigali, a Bible college of East Africa, Rwanda. We have three campuses in Kenya, in Tanzania, and Rwanda. But uh, a few uh, faithful teachers, so we are waiting missionaries from Firestone Bible College. Okay? The third, this is new denomination, the Orthodox Presbyterian Church, 1936. Okay, the Manchon, he is separate from Princeton uh, Theological Seminary, 1922. He's still in the PCUSA until 1936. Okay. So, 20, 1929, he established the Westminster Theological Seminary. Westminster Theological Seminary was found, found, founded in Philadelphia to carry on and uh, perpetuate the policies and traditions of Princeton Theological Seminary, all the Princeton Princeton Theological Seminary as it existed uh, prior to the uh, reorganization thereof in 1929 in respect to scholarship and militant defense of the reformed faith. So the Mason said, we are true son of Old Princeton Theological Seminary. We are very faithful to the Bible and faithful to the Reformed faith. So he uh, named the new Bible College Westminster Theological Seminary. Why Westminster? Because this Bible College focused on the traditions of Presbyterian Church. Westminster Confession of Faith, Westminster uh, Shorter Catechism, Westminster uh, Larger Catechism. Focused on tradition of Presbyterian, Reformed Theology, Calvinistic Theology, Calvinism. So he called this new seminary Westminster Theological Seminary. On July 18, 1929, the form of Westminster Theological Seminary took shape. More than 70 persons gathered together, including former directors, professors, and students of uh, Princeton Theological Seminary. 
Main Chen made the opening address and Dr. Wilson and Alice also spoke. Dr. Charles uh, Shell moved the solution. It was adopted without the dissenting vote. The being convinced that the action of the General Assembly of 1929 establishing a new board of control for Princeton Theological Seminary will inevitably make the institution conform to the present doctrinal drift of the church and so uh, desert the distinctive doctrinal position which is bound by the most solemn trust obligation to maintain, we believe that immediate step should be taken for the establishment of a new theological seminar which shall continue the policy of unswerving loyalty to the Word of God and to the Westminster standards for which Princeton Seminary has been so long and so honorably known. This is the reason, the establishment of the Westminster Theological Seminary. This is not for new doctrine, it's just follow the old Princeton theology, the faithful to the word of God and faithful to the Westminster standards. That's the reason of the establishment of the Westminster Theological Seminary. On September 25th, 1929, Westminster Theological Seminary is proposed and plan was delivered as the first convocation address at Westminster Theological Seminary. Machen in this address showed where Westminster Seminary should go. Our new institution is devoted to an unpopular cause. It is devoted to the service of one who is despised and rejected by the world and increasingly belittled by the visible church, the majestic Lord and Savior who is present to us in the word of God. From him, men are turning away one by one. His sayings are too hard. His deeds of power too strange. His atoning death too great an offense to human pride. So, the Princeton Theological Seminary they just follow the worldly thought. Uh, they control by modernists. Modernists is nothing else, uh, just uh, apply all the worldly thinking, worldly rule into Christianity. So they despise all the biblical truth. But uh, Westminster Confession of uh, Westminster Theological Seminary, they just want to faithful to the Word of God, the old path, and Westminster standards. Okay, but to him. Despite all we hold, the Bible then which testifies of Christ is the center and core of that with which Westminster Seminary had to do. Very different is the attitude of most theological institutions today, most seminaries which greater or lesser clearness and consistency regard not the Bible alone in any unique sense, but the general phenomenon of the religion as being the subject matter of their cause. Uh, Machen said 1929, 
the most seminaries, most Bible colleges, they uh, departed from the biblical truth from that day. But now, almost 990 uh, years ago, until today, the apostasy more severe than that time. The modernism, now this is not modernistic era, now this is the post-modernistic era, post-modernism. More, it getting worse and worse in spiritually. What can we do? How can we survive this kind of conditions? I told you one more, once more, please do biblical exercise and concern and study about the heresies, about the false doctrine and modernism and discern. The Bible tells us. A major mention about the relationship between a new reformation and the Bible. He emphasized the Bible should be known exactly what it said. This is our position. He also said the new reformation. What is new reformation? The 500 years ago, uh, the reformers, they reformed the church. They came out from the Roman Catholic Church. They revived the biblical truth. But the day of uh, Dr. J. Gresham mentions the apostles in the Presbyterian Church. So he said about the new reformation. The new reformation is not a then the, the word sola scriptura by the Bible alone. So later, uh, Dr. Carl McIntyre, he also said about the 20th century reformation because the church, especially the Bible, uh, the Presbyterian Church in United States of America, PCUSA, they are not the conservative anymore. Even the members, they are not Christian anymore. So they say the May Chen and Carl McIntyre, they say we need new reformation in our day. Now this is 21st century, so we have to say 21st century reformation. Return back to the Bible. I verily believe that the new reformation for which we long will be like the reformation of the 16th century. In that it will mean a return to plain common honesty and common sense. At the end of the Middle Age, the Bible had become a book with seven seals. So the people, they never, they could read the Bible because Bible, all Bible was written in Latin. So uneducated men, they cannot read. Even they said Bible is so, so, so precious. So they cannot read the Bible. How about today? If you, you can buy this Bible with uh, some money, but you have to read this Bible every day and meditate and study and memorize and teach and learn this Bible. But this is the privilege of the Bible Presbyterian Church members. But the other churches is different. They had a lot, uh, many Bible in their house, 
but only in the bookshelf. Okay, they never read because they said, "Oh, it's no need to read the Bible because see internet we can uh, hear many sermons." And also, our pastor he just opened the Bible, read one verse, and he every time he is preaching his own word. The Bible is useless now. Same with the Middle Age. Middle Age, they had no Bible. They cannot, couldn't read the Bible. But now we have the Bible in our hand, but never read the Bible. The same. So today they never discern, couldn't discern the first doctrine because they don't know the Bible. How can they know something wrong? If they have some standards, they can uh, measure what is wrong, what is right. But they don't know the contents of the Bible. How can they discern? This is the problem of our days. Okay? So the Machen and Carl McIntyre, they said about the new Reformation. But today, 21st century reformation still need for us. We must be a man of the Bible. No Bible, no Christianity. So learn and teach, preach and study, memorize and meditate and live according to the teaching of the Bible. So again, today the Bible has been covered with an elaborate business of interpretation that is worse in some respect than anything that the Middle Age could produce. The new Reformation will brush all that way. There will be a rediscovery of the great Reformation doctrine of the First picket of scripture, man will make the astonishing discovery that the Bible is a plain book addressed to plain man and that it means exactly what it says. It's the necessary of the 21st century reformation. Uh, Manchin spoke continually the theological traditions on which Westminster Theological Seminary had to pursue. He declared Westminster Theological Seminary loyalty to the reform phase and Westminster confession and catechisms. 